uh, because okay, the half, half a point higher than me, that's fair. Yeah. After all, after all, Panis and Netanyahu is now uh, uh, free to build in uh, uh, certain areas in Jerusalem that he couldn't uh, until this declaration. Because once President Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, you're not going to demand Israel to refrain from building in its own capital, right? So the other thing which I thought was very significant, and I'm wondering what you thought about this as well, is that the president did something that he doesn't like to do, which is he used a teleprompter. And he was very specific in his words. He used two terms that, quite frankly, I'm not convinced that he actually ever knew before, and that was he referred to the Al-Aqsa Mosque and as well as Haram al-Sharif. Of course, Haram al-Sharif is, is the Muslim word for the Temple Mount. Viewing it from my perspective, it seems like the president was very careful in sending a message to the real Muslim leaders. He doesn't care about the Palestinians who he knows are traditionally anti-Israel, anti-American. But he's sending a message to the Jordanians and the Saudis saying, guys, don't worry. Like, I, I'm going to be okay. I'm not going overboard over here. I can even say that, you know, the Muslims have to worship at Al-Aqsa Mosque and we have to keep the integrity of Haram al-Sharif. That was my read. What did you get out of that very scripted conversation with the, the president had a very scripted announcement from the White House? Um, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, I would just add that currently uh, uh, Trump is building a lot on the relationship between Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, and the uh, crown prince of Saudi Arabia, who is soon to become uh, the king. Uh, if anything does work out as expected, if Jared goes home in the winter or later on in the summer, uh, or the crown prince of uh, Saudi Arabia turns out not to be the best uh, uh, person on earth uh, to advance uh, the causes uh, the United States believes in, uh, this could all blow up into our face. So we are, we are all building on, on, on the assumption that uh, the Jordan, the Saudis, uh, Egypt, and other Gulf countries are on board with Trump regarding a peace deal. We don't know the details yet. We don't know if Israel is even uh, ready to consider taking certain steps that would uh, bring uh, the Arab and Gulf states uh, uh, to put certain pressure on the Palestinians to agree to come to the negotiation table. So we are we are very far away from What say you final word on this Jacob Gorba? I'd say he wants a Trump Tower in Ramallah. <laughs> I don't know how possible that would be in the short term, but certainly for licensing purposes, he can get it done. Jacob Kormlu, the political editor of the Jewish Insider, you can read him in Mishpacha magazine. You can also read me in Mishpacha magazine. Great to have you live on the air Thursday night with New York City Councilman David Greenfield. Thanks for joining us.
Greenfield. It's Thursday night. David Greenfield on the radio. It is Thursday night. David Greenfield live on the radio. We're going to wrap up on this issue because I think it's uh, a very big deal. Also, I want to take your calls. I think this is such a momentous occasion that we'd love to hear from people how they feel. And, you know, uh, we're going to take your call. 718-303-9090 is our phone number. 718-303-9090. Are you happy? Are you happy with... The fact that Donald Trump made a decision, do you think it goes far enough? Would you like to go further? And what do you think about the prospects of peace between Israel and the Palestinians? 718-303-9090, 718-303-9090. Are you happy with Donald Trump? Do you want to thank him? Or are you upset at him? Where do you come out on this? 718-303-9090 is our phone number. 718-303-9090. I want to just point out this very important point, which is, you know, a lot of folks, especially the traditional diplomats, have, have really gone into a tizzy over here, and they're upset, and they're frustrated, and they say, you know, how could the president do this? Uh, it tips the, 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 the status quo, the scales, the balance. Can we just stop with this ridiculousness? And, you know, the problem with, with claiming that there is a status quo or that there is some sort of balance between the two sides is that it's just not true. The reality is, let's just call a spade a spade. The Israelis have been prepared to make peace since the start of the State of Israel. In 1948, when the United Nations suggested a partition agreement where Israel would be split in half and half would be Israel and half would be Palestine, Israel was the one who said, what do we sign? It was the Palestinians with the Arab community that came after the Israelis. They came after the Israelis. They attacked Israel and tried to wipe them off the map. Time and time again, the Israelis have wanted peace. Time and time again, the Palestinians have rebuffed them and have turned to terror. The idea that somehow we have to treat both sides as equal is absurd. It really doesn't make any sense. The reality is the Israelis want to make peace. The Palestinians don't. You can look at the survey. The survey consistently shows. The polling consistently shows. Israelis want peace. The Palestinians don't. The Palestinians, in fact, the Palestinians, in fact, they literally get paid to engage in terrorist acts. If you are a failed Palestinian father and you have a problem with your wife and you're not liking your life and you cannot pay your bills, you actually have an incentive to go and blow yourself up because the Palestinian Authority will, in fact, pay for you. Hey, Speaking they finally got the tunnel. Jesus Christ.
going on a nuclear attack against two, maybe? I don't know. And how long is this river? Yeah. 